Well, hello everybody, and I hope welcome back to another Sunday video. I was going to make it now because it's bright and it's sunny and the wind had stopped, but wouldn't you know it, I hit record and the wind picks right up. So, yeah, hopefully the mic's not going to abuse that too bad. We will, uh, I guess, jump straight into looking at the plants and maybe the wind will get back to being nice and, and well behaved. Tried to do a video update last week. Tragic things happened with uh, file corruption and old computers, so yes, hopefully this will work better. I got lots of pods I want to show you. It's been pretty good couple of weeks for growth out here, so yeah, let's uh, hopefully get started on that. A lot of hopefuls in this one, isn't there? I guess we'll start with this first bit in the chaos garden first. The uh, sunflowers here seem to be doing all right. I've noticed a few people in town, they're starting to get uh, flower heads actually forming on theirs. I've had no luck with sunflowers since we've been here, so I'm not expecting much. A couple of these ones in the back, eh, looking a little hopeful, but again, not expecting much. These pumpkins over here seem to be doing all right, getting some decent growth in the leaves. Not seeing the beginnings of, oh, correct that. I am finally seeing the beginnings of flowers in here. Might have enough time. These are a super short season pumpkin. So again, with that keyword today, hopeful we'll see maybe i'll get some pumpkins out of this they're supposed to be like uh, 17 pounds or something like that if they finish off so that would be absolutely fantastic not much else to see in this particular mound we'll take a quick look at it anyway but the shard is still buried under weeds i've been trying to stay on top of that but yeah this is gum weed stuff here it just sticks right to your fingers and it's, it's a pain it's a real pain to deal with Need to find a solution for that. Need to just let the chickens out here is what I need to do. Sticky. Like I was saying though, here's a look at that shard. Got some decent growth going on there. And if I did clean it up, it would certainly look a lot better. So I really should, but just haven't gotten around to it. Spent most of yesterday mowing the lawn, pretty much the entire afternoon. Giving that riding mower to Fuzzy so he can make himself a bit of a career well, short-term job anyway. There are strawberries in there, I swear. Let's see. And... Strawberries! So yeah, anyway, giving the riding mower to Fuzzy, so I'm back to pushing roughly three and a half miles of straight walking to do the lawn. So it does take a little while. It does take a while. I kid you not, the wind was calm and beautiful all morning. That's why I got started on this now, but apparently a few minutes too late. So here we have the uh, sister's garden for the year. We can see the espresso corn is coming along really nicely in some places. And then surprisingly over by the beans, if you look kind of at the top part of this shot, you can see that patch in the middle. It's not really coming along that well at all. A lot of thistles that I really should have weeded out of here, but I'm kind of uh, just burying things with mulch as I go. Yesterday was good for that. I got a lot of mulching done in the garden. We can see on these pumpkins, looking in a little carefully there, lots of flower starts. I never did thin out the numbers in any of these mounds, so they are definitely, all of them, well over planted. And I'm sure that'll be a problem in, in some aspect. But for now, things are pretty much looking okay. You can see these white flowers popping up behind it. That was a volunteer broccoli that just kind of voltage soon after it came up but looking on the side here at the runner beans that are kind of forced to run sideways we've got some orange nice bright orange coming up there so that's the beginnings I think of some beans and it's happening in a few places I think this was a volunteer radish that went crazy these beans are definitely running trying to encourage them to go along the side because that's really the only way they've got to go. I'm not sure that that's really how these things want to grow. They are, after all, climbing beans. But, um, whatever. It's a frame. I'll just have to deal with it. There's another good shot of those coming up nice. For the most part, the weeding or the mulching seems to be keeping you know, a lot of the weeds down few interesting volunteers and I'm leaving some of them in here for diversity oh here's some more of that wind but oh kicking the tripod volunteer tomato 
I'm guessing that's one of those uh, broad ripple yellow current tomatoes. There's another one there, another one beside it here, just kind of under the corn. I don't think you're really supposed to grow tomatoes and corn together, but if they want to grow, I'll let them because I don't really have a lot of tomatoes on the grow this year. So, yeah, that, that is what it is. Let's pop over and look at the radish and carrot bed before we get to looking at some peppers. Had a great time making a wonderful clip last week, pulling radishes and showing them off for how beautiful they were. That's not a good example. Like I said, last week's video didn't necessarily work out. That's a nice looking radish. These French breakfast radishes though, for the most part, they are working out. And I have to say, I'm pretty, pretty pleased. We do have a couple of seed packs of regular radishes in here, which is why they're not all cylindrical. We do have a few bulb type. Doesn't seem to be affecting the carrots too bad. Like these back rows that were definitely overplanted with carrots. Lots of life in there. Mmm. And then, yeah, I'm gonna take these in, have myself a nice little veggie plate nibble for lunch with some blue cheese dressing to dip it in there. Which everybody loves or hates blue cheese. Doesn't seem to be a lot of middle ground there. So we haven't quite worked our way through as many of these radishes as I was hoping. And the carrots are still a little bit covered up in the front. But slowly but surely we're working our way through this. And this is definitely our best year yet for radishes. So French breakfast for the win. All right, well, I see today the wind is just not going to work with me. So I'm going to do the best I can. You know, I am sorry as always. The two lemon habaneros that we've got in the bunker garden are just busting out with peppers. I'm really excited about that. I suspect, I mean, it's only just July, so we might actually have time for these to ripen up properly. That would be fantastic. Spin a little here. Oh, I might actually have to move. Yeah, we still got some shadow issues, but hopefully you can see that nice pepper there. There's a nice example down there. So with the peppers, with tomatoes, with everything I put into this bunker garden, it seems to be more productive than the exact same plants pretty much anywhere else on the property. Fascinating. Turning to take a look at the Caribbean red, we've got a much different shape. Very deep ribs forming on that. That's going to be very interesting. So far I think that's the only Caribbean red pepper I've got forming on any of the plants including those over in the actual proper pepper patch there but lots of lemon habs over there oh my goodness because the wind is being what it is we're just going to take a look at a couple of these but there's a nice example these are the ones growing just right between the two tomatoes at the very back and I thought I saw Another nice little pepper on there. If you look up, hopefully you can see it through the branches there. The pepper in front's got a little one on it. The pepper beside that one's got it. Oh, let's see if we can get closer to this one here. Oh, that wind is just killing me. There's a nice little pepper. Get you out in the sun. There's a nice slightly bigger pepper right there. So yeah, it looks like the lemon habanero pepper plants are definitely my winners this year. And thanks to them, I will have at least something to harvest. A little tiny one there. Two little tiny ones there. I was really was hoping for something a little bit hotter than habaneros. And I do have some excitement on that score. This is the uh, Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea Red. We've got open flowers hopefully you can see that fresh flowers dangling so maybe just maybe one of these pretty babies will give me something truly painful and on the not at all painful side of things Santa Fe Grande struggles survives and produces that's so cute not exactly a grande pepper at this point but you know what, anything at all, I'll take it. 
I'll take it. And I guess for our final truly happy thought, look what Shocks discovered. The other day I came home and I'm like, why is the old mouse melon sitting out there? She's like, I told you, it's still alive. I told you. And she was right. Might be a case of too little too late, but at least it's still alive. So we pulled the tomatoes out and all the other weeds that were popping up and we'll see. Maybe this little guy will still bear us some cucumelons. That would be adorable. All right, so I'm gonna run inside and try and edit this up. Hopefully post it. There's that keyword again, hopefully. I will see you guys again in the very near future because I found a nice large planter to put that bad brains from the Aero Gardens in. So I'm gonna get doing that next week. And I'm looking into some companion plants for peppers. So yeah, you may or may not wanna check out that episode if I can get it to upload. All right, cool. Take care everybody, much love, and I will see you, well, next time.